Hi everybody, this is Moom and welcome to Moomda's Life Fan Made. Today I am participating in the Look For Less Challenge where I am going to create a high-end tube. That is, my inspiration is from a high-end store, a decor piece which is expensive and I am going to create it for in a very less budget. The Look For Less Challenge is hosted by Yami from the Latina Next Door and this month is being co-hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. I'll put link to both the channels in the description box of my video and also give link to the playlist for more ideas. My today's inspiration is from this beautiful online store called www.farmhousedecor.com. In their site, in the Christmas and holiday section, there are variety of Christmas, fall and Halloween decor items and I loved this which still hot candle holder which is sold here for 28 US dollars. The contrast of black against the orange, the still hot is standing away from the background and is throwing its shadow over the orange background which appears as a huge moon. I think this looks beautiful. I really like it and for the coming Halloween time, I think this will make a perfect decor. It will be nice and my kids are going to love it. They really appreciate it while I was just creating it. Honestly, when I started, I thought it would be a very quick and easy DIY, but it needed some great brainstorming going after it. I hope you will enjoy this. If you're new to this channel, a big hello. Look around in my channel. I love doing lots of DIYs, trash to treasures, high-end tubes, everything related to home within budget. And if you love such content, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button given below. And do hit that ringing bell icon so that you're notified each time I post my video. For this DIY, I'm using this sign from Dollar Tree and I had used this before. I removed the top metallic attachment and added a ribbon here and had made a welcome sign for the winter last year. I would removed the florals from this and I can use this sign again to make this fetch silhouette Halloween decor piece. So I'm going to use this one. This is perfect size, just exactly the way it is on the sides. Uh, on the site and I can use it exactly like this. So a circular sign as this. Then I will need beautiful orange cardstock paper. Now I had this paper at hand and therefore I'm going to use this paper. I'll trace the outline of the circle over this and just cut it out and paste it over this to get the orange background. Otherwise, one can just paint the whole thing using some acrylic color. Now what I did is, I kept the front like this itself and on the back side I have glued my orange cardstock paper and I have left this hanging attachment because anyways I am going to need to something to hang it. Now for the next step, I need the black witches and the moon silhouette on the front. And for that I have taken this black really hard cardstock paper or foam board paper. So something very stiff and strong in black. Now it has to come of the same size. It, so I just uh, traced the circle using this as a template and got a circle in the same size. And then on the back side I will have Either I can sketch my silhot, which I would prefer to do because I can hand sketch or one can just print it out in a paper or a tracing paper and trace it over this. The same pattern. If you notice the original piece, the front piece doesn't have any bats. So the bats are on this orange portion and not on the front black part. So on this black part, I will just have the moon and the witch flying with its cat on a broomstick. Now this portion was really painful so if you can get a printout just reverse it or use it as it is and cut out a silhouette and cut out a similar black paper or foam board for this or you can sketch it 
because I did sketch it. So I'm going to show, let me walk you through the sketching portion so that it gets easier for you if you want to sketch it. So what I noticed, um, since I'm using the back side, if you are using a white pen, then it's okay for doing it over the black background. But it's difficult for me, therefore I'm just turning it around and I'm using the back side which is off white in color and I can draw over it. So you see I have uh, done it up, done a pencil sketch over it. I'm going to just walk you through so if you want to make your own you can do so. So the first thing I just placed it like this and just eyeballed where my uh, tips of the moon should be and that was my guidelines to start. So I started from this portion and I want to end here. So I just went in a circular fashion and here is my moon because it's a back side I can you know make corrections without any fear so this is the moon and then for the witch so first thing I made the broom so making the broom gave me a guideline so I just made the broom first. Now after the broom was done, I started with the witch. Now the witch has a very pointed nose and a pointed chin. And then a hand comes to hold the broomstick. And then her body has to come. And her knees and the foot, a skirt will flow down like this. So another hand comes and holds the uh, broomstick. So here. Now remember, the more we have this joints, the more stable our cutouts will be. So all these points are joined, so it will be easier. And then I make the witch's hat, which will be actually the most prominent thing. So I just make the witch's hat and then I have to make her hair and her cloak, which is flying in the air because she is flying on a broomstick. Now her waist and then the back portion, again joining with the broomstick. These are all joined together, they'll all cut out together. And her flow is cut. So let's make this cut. And once the skirts are done, from the knees comes down one leg and she has those pointy silhouettes sil or shoes, the other leg. Again, a pointy heel. And then we need a cat here. Now the cat is sitting after the broom starts. And a shape like this, pointy ears, head, pointy ears, the face, and then a back. And then comes the tail. So now I'll just cut this out with a pair of sharp scissors. I need small scissors for this because there are a lot of fine areas where I'll have to reach and cut. I'm cutting very close to the edge and then taking my time to do the detailed cutting portion. For the portion that is inside, I'm using a sharp knife for this and I'll make cut roots through this and then maybe go with the scissors again when I have the opening here. Once the opening is made, I can come back with the scissors here.
the reason why I'm sharing this whole tedious process of drawing and cutting is because there might be so many people like me who don't have Cricut or anything fancy that would help you make these items and you might think that it's just not possible everything is possible if you have the desire to make this there's nothing that can stop you from crafting so it's very much possible and you can do this it takes a little effort little patience and some hard work but one can do this as I told before don't try to do everything in one go take your time and do the details slowly in next step next step Honestly, it was really hard work, but hard work pays and here we have it. Let me just trim this part. Now, the most worrisome part here is, I think I'll just take a marker and uh, put some black paint around these edges and that will do fine. Now, the problem will be because this broomstick is very thin, I need to add some support here as well. Now, you can see this witch and the cat and everybody is making a shadow against the orange background and exactly that's how we want it i absolutely don't mind being called thrifty or resourceful that definitely helps so these are those pieces the bigger pieces that were cut out when we took the sill hearts so i'm going to use exactly these pieces to make my bats the reason is these are of the same size as the leftover background and if I make my bats on these spare pieces, I will have the bats in the size that would fit very well in the background. Isn't that intelligent? So let's keep this aside and I have drawn some bats already and I'm going to show one more just for a demo for you. Making bats is very simple. Bats have ears so you can make ears like this, like a stretched M. So we've made a stretched M like a cat head or a bat head. Then we have the wings like this. And then we have a center point little below it and a tail. Here is our bat ready. And I'm just going to cut them out with the fine scissors just the way we did the salad. So after cutting the salad, this will be a piece of cake. It will be just so easy. So here we have the first part and similarly cut out the rest. Now with this piece still lying flat against this, I'll position it. So this is how it's going to hang. I'm going to position it such that the tip of this comes right in the center and this is how it's going to be positioned and now simply I'm going to take this cutouts and glue them in this spaces left behind. So therefore using these papers was too much useful. So now I'll glue them exactly at these points, four bats. Just neatening up these edges so that this white pieces of this paper doesn't show. Now comes the toughest part, how to make it stand over this at a height. So I found a way out too. So we have, uh, I found this gap. Now the speciality of this gap is the cross section area is like a square so it can lie flat against this surface as well as flat against this as well so and 
the width the side is such that it can easily hold my battery operated small candle so this is a perfect size lid and taking this as the template I use some thermocol here which is easy to cut using a sharp knife so I've cut the small pieces which are of the same height as that of uh, this cap so now these will form the pillars just like archi architecture so these will form the pillars over which my sill hot of the which will rest like this isn't this really smart now the first thing that I'll do is paint all these pieces in black Now this portion is little weak to give it some strength I'm using this little stick or skewer and it's thin one so I'm measuring how much I want and I'm taping it behind to work as a splint. So this will give some strength now you see it's more stable now. Now these pieces are dry and I'll glue them onto this. I'm just making sure that these are placed such that it's not seen from front. Well, it will get seen from the sides but it should not get seen from the front. I think I am in totally love with this rich silhouette candle holder. The candle light behind this is making it look more spectacular. What do you think? The witch flying against the moon, the bats in the sky, isn't this perfect for the coming Halloween? Isn't it beautiful and you would really love making it? Compared to the $28 that you saw on the site, mine just turned out to be around $2 to $3. That's it for the existing sign from the Dollar Tree. Some black cardstock paper and that orange paper, not more than $3. I think it's a great deal. What do you think about my today's DIY? Do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share this video. And if you are new here, please subscribe to my channel for more such DIY ideas. I thank you all for your time and appreciation. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Until then, stay positive, be creative and be happy.